Short overview of this week's program. We start with your sign, talk about your week, the potential energies. That is section one. Section two, from Tokyo nights. 5D, five dimensional upgrading methods. How do you expand and go one step further towards your potential? I call it 5D, but it's really multidimensional. We are going into if you are doubting spirituality or your spirituality, if you are doubting if you can get any further, here in section two is how to get the proof for yourself and how to manifest it in your life. Welcome. Hi there, Cancer, and welcome to this week's astrological and intuitive tarot and astrology forecast for the week that starts at the 3rd of December and ends at the 10th of December 2018. This week, your modern shaman is back in Denmark. For three days I've been here because I needed an operation in this left knee. So two days ago I was operated. And that's why this first section of this program, which will last six to nine minutes, where we will draw a tarot card and an astro astrology card and talk about cancers, the energy tendencies of this week for cancer. In section two, we have been, I have been filming in Tokyo, Tokyo by night. And um, we will go a step deeper into the into reality, the 5D or the other dimensions and how we can upgrade ourselves. Um, and we will also be filming flying across um, Russia and Japan, seen from the air. So we're traveling because this week we are having a new moon in Sagittarius and we are having Jupiter and the Sun here. And as you might know, Sagittarius is a sign of the traveler where we expand our minds through opening up towards different cultures. We go out and we travel and we, we, uh, we, we, we not necessarily escape, but we uh, go away from our natural habitat uh, to um, expand our mind through other uh, sides of life that we aren't usually surrounded by. So that's why I thought that was appropriate. So this, all of this happens actually in your sector of responsibilities and duties and obligations and all you have to do in your day-to-day -day life. So there's a lot of focus upon that. Um, and this new moon on Friday is in square to Mars and Neptune in a conjunction in your ninth house. This means that besides from this week feeling like you have to do your obligations and uh, trying to make them interesting by expanding your mind, um, you know, Sag is usually kind of the guru where you expand your, your reality um, and this being in the everyday routine life, you find it nice usually to, to do this, uh, the, your routines in an in inspiring way. Mm. And you are very organized, usually known to be someone, <laughs> of course, everyone can be messy, but uh, you are known to be someone that, unless if not something else in your chart says otherwise, are able to organize yourself and keep things nice around your home. Sweet and, and, and comfortable and hygelied, as we say in Danish. But in square to Mars and Neptune in your ninth, this is going to be a week where you'll feel this tension between just wanting to escape, just wanting to break free of the routines, just wanting freedom, go out there dreaming spiritually, ah, just taking off to another planet, either inwardly or outwardly, and just saying, F it with the routines, I don't want to care about them. But still a part of you knows that you have to do your duty and your daily routines. I'm sorry, I'm having a little uh, weird feeling in my knees, or I'm a little weird. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, at the same time this week, let's just start with the card while I'm talking. We are also having Venus. Oof. We are also having Venus, um, the planet of, of, of beauty and uh, care and love and affection. 
Mm. Moving into Scorpio in your fifth house, that's a very good pla uh, placement. Bringing romantic stirrings into your life. Cut of the week for the Kansas. Uh, it's, it's attracting this um, joy in your fifth house, Scorpio, where she will be until the 5th of January, actually. And, and it's something you can, you can look forward to. And the, the 18th, on the 18th, Venus will be back out of her retrograde cycle. So after the 18th of December, something new can happen in this sector. Um, but yeah, maybe someone will return now and brighten up your, your world. <laughs> In the more romantic or fun and joyful sector of yours. Let's see. And you, you can also perhaps be more popular and going more into the limelight, like shining so bright because of, it's the fifth house, that's where we are on stage. And even though this is definitely not what, what the Cancers usually want, with Venus here you might just be <laughs> forced to get into to the limelight and the stage. Let's see what the card of the week. Mercury, a planet of, of, of our planet of communication and movement, is retrograding, or was retrograding. And Venus is entering on Monday, and Mercury was into Scorpio, and Mercury was retrograding into Scorpio Sunday, just uh, the second. <laughs> okay, let me just finish the, the talk with, with about Mercury. And here, so, if there's been any kind of like... Uh, 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 unstable um, agreements or, or things you, you haven't been able to get across, like getting the, the, some kind of fixed idea about, like, okay, where should we be at Christmas? Who's going to come? And where do I go? Where do you go? And people can't, uh, doesn't, hasn't, haven't really been answering you. Or it's been hard for you to find out of what to do. Maybe this Mercury will help these settlements to get on track. So Neptune, I don't know if you remember, uh, but I mentioned that Neptune was in your ninth house wanting to escape because he's together with Mars. It usually makes you want to push forward and do something about it. But he's putting a veil around Mars, slowing him down, making him more dreamy, just wanting to escape. And in the ninth house for you, into spirituality, into meditation, into you know, woo, another world of crystals and flowers and harp music. <laughs> this tendency could be there this week. Maybe it will be good for you. More than the duties, who knows, because that is where the tension are between the two. Um, tarot card of the week. I'll put on the glasses again. For the Kansas. I'm not, have, I'm not on painkillers, but I must say... Oh, actually, I, it's not been that long since I had to take one. They we went in with a, uh, two places here in my left knee two days ago. Exactly 48 hours ago. Card of the week. We also have to remember that when Venus and, and Mercury returns into Scorpio, this is where we commit on a deeper level. We want things not to go score on the surface, not just to be polite. We tend to now, Venus out of the harmonious diplomatic Libra sign, might be a little less diplomatic and a more like intense and desiring things here in your fifth house. Whoops, two cards of the week for the Kansas. Three cards. Oh my God. <laughs> ah, look. Oh, three of my favorite cards. I must say, so Neptune, escapism, you know, sacrificing, thinking about other people's needs. Here we have, first of all, romantic, six of cups, it's emotions, emotions, pentacles, materializing things, money, pregnancy, projects coming to fruition. Here, someone, someone, you're starting something new physically that you are grounding and you can be getting something grounded. It can also be a small project, a little thing, but it's something that you initiate and gets grounded. Then you're hanging out with friends, having a really good time, enjoying yourself, probably uh, Venus and Mercury in the fifth house. Uh, and someone from your past may bring up some, some uh, nostalgic, uh, romantic, or just really sweet feelings of yours this week. How nice is this? Just try to find a balance between 
you know, wanting to break free and commit, commitment and connection. Something good, really good could come to you this week if you open up to see that it's already there in front of you. These are really good cards. Find a balance between the, that and the escapism. Judas and escapism, you find a balance between those two and it will all work out fine. Just check the details of things can blur up a little bit this week. So if you're having traveling plans with, with Neptune and Mars in your ninth house, you want to go out and travel, um, make sure you check all the details on your ticket. Do you have everything you need, etc. Don't follow trends, follow your heart. See you next week or in the second part of the program. Thank you. From the two people with similar experiences to mine and their conversation. I refer to Joshua Polak and Kamlesh D. Patel. You can write down the names if you want to search upon more information about these two fellas. So, once upon a time, I heard some people talk about Samadhi. So I remember I was only 20 and my father had given me a book where it said, Samadhi is a profound state of inner equanimity where you drift beyond yourself, beyond the here and now, beyond everything into eternity. Such an interesting thing to read about, but it was only mental. It was not integrated in me. But I clearly felt I was longing for it. I heard my intuition say, this is where you really want to go. Sometimes people don't think they are able to meditate. They just don't have the mind or body for it. And they say, meditation isn't for me. Here I might add, yet. Because it's just a door anyone can walk through with the right guidance. When the heart is at peace, the mind is at rest. And as the two gentlemen before mentioned uh, might add, well, it's a really nice way to start with the heart. I say that too. Many traditions start with the heart, heartfulness amongst others. And before I even met heartfulness, I did it, so the soul knows already that when the heart is satisfied, the mind can attain the higher knowledge we consciously and subconsciously want to return to, so that we can bring a balance in our whole body, mind and soul, high heart and mind, it, like the holistic circle. But often we are dominated by various mental and emotional tendencies we inherit. <laughs> we need methods to clean and balance them if we want to get out of miseries, like a spring cleaning. Sometimes in life we meet a spiritual master, and this actually happens more within as without, or externalization. Sometimes we meet a, a physical spiritual master, which reflects the state we are in, inside, or ready to come into, or be guided towards. Whether or not you have met this, if you're on this channel still viewing, you're ready to expand somehow. Your higher self has called you to listen to this. Could have been anyone else saying the same things. It doesn't matter. You're ready, at some level. Of course, sometimes people need food on the table more than they need conversations with God, with other dimensions, or stuff like that. First things first. Thing is that a book or a show like this can give us wisdom and can give us knowledge. But it cannot make us wise or make us experience the wisdom ourselves. We can be guided, but we gotta really want it and learn to follow our inner voice, our intuition. We gotta do it ourselves. A spiritual source can never be found internally. 
It may reflect what you are, in which state, but it can only be found within through your intention and awareness and work. Even though you find a spiritual master, you have to work for it. Seek the life beyond the three dimensions, the essence beyond the form, the light behind the heavy, the wisdom beyond the ignorance, is what I heard the two guys say. A spiritual state can only be felt, not mentally thought. We feel with our hearts open, so we need to work upon keeping them open. A benefit is that with open hearts we can receive and give love, like open arms and open hands. With closed heart and hands, we don't receive anything. Again, experience is greater than knowledge. In the lecture, you can learn the principles. In the la laboratory, you get practical experience, he said. You have to use yourself fully to be and make this experiment. You have to use yourself. You are the experiments. Otherwise, how can you say, well, there is no other way for me to be and to experience life there, are no other dimensions if you haven't tried it. Why meditate? Well, why not? We're back at that conversation. <laughs> people have different reasons, like people have different reasons for buying a car <laughs> or doing whatever in your life. To gain, could it be? To find inner peace, it could be. To get relief from a stressful life, to get mental clarity, to have and achieve emotional balance, to relax, to physically reduce your blood pressure. Then when you start, you'll get benefits that far exceed these goals. A profound sense of spiritual well-being. Meditation simply normalizes your inner state, whatever it may be. So if someone is stressed, This person will say that it reduces stress. If someone is emotionally unstable, this person will say that it stabilizes emotions. An aggressive and mad person will say it makes you loving, they said in their conversation. I love that conversation. <laughs> But what does meditation do? It creates naturalness. When you move forward with natural or naturally, The unnatural will disappear automatically. There are thousands of ways of being unnatural, but only one way of being natural. What a nice way to put it. Why meditate? Well, today's reason may be different from tomorrow, and as we meditate, wisdom grows. Like for me, in the beginning, it was just to get peace of mind. But now I see it's the only way. I expand and evolve through this, and my ego is released more and more. It gets more refined. Freedom and peace, but also a clear contact with my higher purpose for being here. I simply hear my higher self better year after year meditating and now also hear and also see often the higher selves of others too so you might ask is this an infinite journey here life on planet earth if we reincarnate and so do you ever reach the goal well, if there was a final stop they said you would stop growing and moving evolution 
stuff. So they said that we must be willing to change to help evolution, become flexible, because it's never stopping where you are now. They said that it was like an asymptote, a line, that are, and a curve, where the curve is getting closer and closer to the line to intersect. They're getting closer, but they never touch infinitely. It's the same with spirituality and perfection, they said. Isn't that interesting? And what it is that we move towards is to become less selfish, less reactive, less identif- have less identification with our egos. And, and we've got to get free from the formulas because we expand into other dimensions, as I always talk about. And we get into a peaceful state instead of the restful, restless. And we become more authentic. authentic. We are following our hearts instead of trends, as I also always say. Instead of being superficial, we find our authentic purpose. We start accepting others as they are. Instead of insisting on that they become like us, we become more balanced and we step more into the light. The purpose of meditation is to transform us. Like self-development, psychiatry and religion does or do. We live in the age of knowledge here, the age of Aquarius. Any knowledge, uh, scientific or, or spiritual, is accessible to us at the internet, age of Aquarius. But knowledge cannot change us. This is the point. To know about love and to feel and express it are two different things. And this is interesting, right? Because if teachings was enough, they said, we would all be transformed by now. (laughs) You may believe in the omnipresence of God, but do you feel it? That is the difference. Through meditation we go within and find something higher. Not always, not every time. When I meditate, it's, it's different because sometimes it's hard because I have a lot of cleaning and clearing out of old thoughts. So I don't get into the state because I'm washing away all the dirt of my mind, the mental things that keeps me out of touch with my heart and the fear and la la la. So it's not a given that it's every time. So it's not because now you're suddenly bad at meditating It's simply because you haven't showered something out and this layer you have to pass to re-enter the source, the core. And this means that that meditation is not a waste and it's not called a bad meditation. It's simply because the meditation turned into a cleaning process so that you then afterwards again can enter this something higher. But again, through meditation, we go within and we find something higher. And that is why we can meditate anywhere. We don't have to do anything but close our eyes and sit quietly, nothing but that. It took me years to think that I didn't need to sit in a special room, in a special chair, with a special kind of guidance. I could do it anywhere. But now you are told otherwise. Many people say that. At the time I started meditating, it wasn't that normal in Denmark, where I come from. So... Again, you don't have to do anything but close your eyes and sit quietly. This is how we get practical experience. Do it over and over again and know that you have to get get past all the noise and the clutter that has been building up because you haven't cleaned your mind or cleared your mind. Maybe for ages, maybe for weeks, maybe for your whole life. So you need to get past this to reach these stages. You have to work for it. Take enough showers mentally. 
If I skip my meditations and a lot of actions are going on, I also need to do it to get back to this condition and continue the journey from here. And I feel after all these years that the need to be me, the ego me, and the person I was dissolves more and more. It loses its meaning. And that is due to me surrendering to all of this. It's not that it loses the meaning to to be my higher self, but the meaning of my ego to have any sort of status diminishes, becomes less and less important. And it is so liberating and amazing. I don't have to be someone or something special to feel love. That's the gift. Because I feel the love automatically when I lose the ego or it becomes a tool I might correct once you learn how to meditate and you become able to take it into your daily life with you you'll find yourself walking and talking with poise such a fine English word which can be translated into something like to say only what's necessary to bring a message across or share the essence and do it gracefully. Having this special peaceful condition meditation can give you while you are talking with other people. This is special. It changes all your conversations. Enough about that more another time. I just want to say bring periods of silence into your speech. Is a great idea. A very great idea. So follow the link uh, below to listen to more of the before mentioned conversation between Kamlis and Joshua, the heartfulness way. Of course, this was just my own uh, conversation <laughs> interlinked with their conversation. Uh, So it won't be exactly as this, but it will be very, very inspiring. Probably more inspiring inspiring than this. So follow the link. So let's wrap this up by saying meditation is one way of breaking down the barriers of dimensions. Making you enter more and more of the truths you already hold. The answers you are seeking to why you experience, experience the things you do in this life what the meaning is of your life, your purpose. There's not only the three dimensions that most of us humans experience. There are so many more that we step in and out of subconsciously. I call these reports the 5D upgrades, but it's simplified and easier for most to grasp. That's why I call it 5D since we can only take so and so many steps at the time in our ascension process without pushing it. Also meaning that we can only understand so and so much. If you want to try to meditate for free and want me to find your teacher, go to my website www or just skip that just write modern shaman m o d e r n s h a m a n dot DK. That is modernshaman.dk. See the link at the bottom of the text underneath this video. And find the contact information to me at the very top of the page in the blue section. Next week we will go further into the different dimensions and how we experience them and why. And how time doesn't exist. A deeper explanation to why this is one big illusion. Let us take one step at a time. Hux, your modern shaman. Don't follow trends. Follow your heart. See you next week.
Don't follow trends, follow your heart.